What could we achieve if our groups and teams in our organizations embraced and demystified the process of organizational learning? Why is this critical for an organization to thrive? To answer these questions, I approached my organizational learning model with hopes and dreams to create the ideal environment to learn, lead, and inspire change. Demystifying organizational learning requires a set of concepts that can guide the actions of managers and researchers who want to promote or study organizational learning in their everyday practice. Organizational learning is defined as a process which includes both insight, action, and views learning as a cynical process involving the evaluation of past behavior, the discovery of error of, or opportunity, invention of new behaviors, and their implementation. Productive learning is difficult to tie directly to the outcomes of an organization. However, the implementation of ideas can directly tie into a positive learning culture. This culture can produce an organization that cultivates effective knowledge management. Organizational learning is most effective when the people in the organization feel like they are ambassadors of learning for the organization and can respond to the environment, both internal and external. In order to lead, change, and transfer knowledge efficiently, an organizational learning model must be embraced by the organization. In this paper, I will discuss what components should be integrated into an ideal organizational model. My ideal model would have an overarching goal of humanistic leadership, which is critical to knowledge management in organizations. In addition, it will contain five components of learning, culture, an effective organizational learning mechanism, psychological safety, motivation, and measurement. Humanistic leadership is critical to functioning learning, and effective knowledge management. In my ideal learning environment, the humanistic model of leadership would be an overarching umbrella which learning was achieved. An organization would do this by balancing the basic four drives, which Pearson aptly describes as the drive to acquire life-sustaining resources, the drive to defend against all life-threatening entities, the drive to bond in order to form long-term mutually caring relationships with other humans, and the drive to comprehend in order to make sense of the world around us with regard to our own existence. The economic perspective suggests that humans constantly rationalize the best decisions to maximize utility, while the humanistic perspective suggests humans draw on capabilities of learning and practical wisdom to enable the balancing necessary. The humanistic model of management is informed by evolutionary biology, which identifies four major drivers of human nature. The first two drivers that we share with animals are critical to our survival, the drive to acquire and drive to defend. Biology suggests that, much like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we as humans are driven by the motivation to acquire what we need for survival and to defend our acquisitions. This model goes on to describe two additional drivers that are unique to the human context, the drive to bond and the drive to comprehend. The drive to bond is the desire to seek out meaningful relationships and the drive to comprehend is a desire to learn and make sense of the world around us. While these four drivers are present in the economistic model of management, they are perceived differently. In the economistic model, the drive to acquire far outweighs the other drivers and is perpetrated to the main driver of human action. This model makes it very hard for learning to be achieved. This model is built off an operating logic that suggests the accumulation of wealth is the end goal of leaders and followers, which also does not support a psychologically safe environment which to learn. While it takes other drivers into account, the model suggests that those drivers are in surface to the drive to acquire and the goal of wealth and power and status. With the humanistic leadership model in mind, the next critical component to the model is the role culture plays in knowledge management. The culture of the organization must be collaborative in order to encourage shared learning. If the cultural soil isn't fertile for a knowledge project, no amount of technology, knowledge content, or good project management proactive will make the effort successful. A, a team's norms and its culture often develop over time and experiences in the organization. An effective organizational learning culture must encourage and allow people to participate in productive learning. 
This means the basic assumptions surrounding the organization will reflect that learning will not be inhibited by individuals or groups. The second part of my organizational model is an effective OLM in order to reflect on experience. Effective OLMs are cultural islands of learning within a sea of organizational culture and subcultures. In order to be an effective OLM, you must develop a cultural repertoire that facilitates learning in the context of a particular set of demands, problems, members, and constraints. In order to learn, organizations must have the ability to reflect, analyze, and disseminate information. An OLM that is effective gives the organization an opportunity to apply critical information, which is learned between individuals and organizations. Designing an appropriate OLM for organizational learning in addition to a supportive culture is imperative for ideal organizational learning. The learning potential for an organization, however, will never be fully developed till psychological safety in this organization is achieved. What is the research and theory which supports the connection between psychological safety and organizational learning? Maslow's theory of motivation argues that safety comes from a stable environment. He notes that threats come in several forms, including both internal and external. Fraud's famous theory of personality is based on the foundation that powerful mental and emotional defenses that people develop to manage psychological threat. Skinner argues that if an individual feels like they may be punished, they will avoid any action that will lead to this threat. Edmondson studied the concept of psychological safety extensively and makes a compelling correlation between psychological safety and organizational learning. According to Edmondson, psychological safety plays a vital role in helping people overcome barriers to learning and change in interpersonally challenging work environments. Research and literature conducted by experts lead us to these key findings about psychological safety being a critical component to generate positive outcomes for organizational learning. In addition, many studies through literature draw the conclusion that being part of a supportive environment Having positive relationships with your colleagues and support throughout all levels of the organization will lead to the highest level of positive outcomes when it comes to organizational learning. Once psychological safety is part of an effective learning culture, then team members will be motivated to share knowledge. Motivation is key to organizational learning for many reasons. The success of an organization relies on the ability of employees to identify and grow their potentials. Humans naturally seek out fulfillment through challenges, learning opportunities, and meaningful tasks that they can learn and apply to their life. Ultimately, employees must find purpose and meaning in their work in order to remain motivated. If an organization's structure for knowledge management does not encourage independent exploration growth and the opportunity to succeed, then an individual will shut down and not feel impelled to learn. If the culture is ripe, OLMs are in place, psychological safety is established, and motivation is cultivated, then we are finally able to measure the success of knowledge management in our organization. Measurement is a critical part of holding individuals and teams accountable for the actions they partake in. If organizations desire knowledge management to be a vital part of their success, then performance must be measured on the scale. According to Lipschitz, organizations must hold managers accountable for engaging in a process if that process is to become ongoing, institutionalized part of the organization's life. Such accountability should occur when a significant part of the manager's performance evaluation is based on the ability and willingness to undertake this process within her or his unit and among peers and subordinates. In conclusion, to have an effective model of knowledge management means to cultivate a culture of learning, develop an appropriate organizational learning mechanism, establish psychological safety, motivate and then measure employees. All of these critical elements to have an effective knowledge management model should be encouraged within a humanistic leadership approach. The practice of organizational learning can and should make your work a more stimulating, interesting, and satisfying experience. I am hopeful that with my model of management that this can be achieved for individuals and organizations alike.